Seven weeks ago, I brought home eight silkworms from the pet store so I could let them transform and watch them go from a little worm to a silk moth. And almost two months later, I'm here with the full update on the journey. The moths they turn into are so freaking cute, but that's not the only thing that I wanted to witness. I also wanted to see how silk is made, because silkworms are the actual creators of silk. And I was always curious to see the weird process of spinning silk too. So when I got home, you can imagine I was really excited to start the journey. The pet store put them in this sad little container, but we all know I was about to change that. I rehoused them in this little home and added a little egg carton and this mulberry chow special for silkworms to eat. Usually in nature, they eat mulberry leaves, but you can also choose to feed them chow. They can eat a hundred times their body weight in just a few weeks, so I made sure to buy a lot so they could grow and morph just right. They very quickly acclimatized to their new home and they definitely ate a lot every day. But I was excited because after three to four weeks of eating, that's when they begin to enter the pupa stage to transform into the cutest moth to ever exist. Trust me on that one. The moth is no bigger than a couple of inches. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here because we still had a few weeks until that would happen. But to be honest, I didn't expect everything to happen so fast. For two weeks, I kept feeding them, checking on their enclosure, making sure everything in their environment was good, until one day, I noticed that a couple of them began to stop eating as much, and I knew that meant one thing, the start of metamorphosis. And a few days after that, I found this little guy covered in silk strands. And in that moment, I knew that this one was ready to start spinning a silk cocoon so it could turn into a moth. I separated it from the others and I left the silk it had already spun as it was, but I think that was a mistake because I soon saw the little one struggling to continue spinning the cocoon when I moved it into a new egg carton. And eventually it just rejected the piece of silk it spun and started spinning an entirely new one. So that was really interesting but what happened next was insane. It started spinning silk strands in a figure eight pattern, slowly creating a protective barrier of silk in that egg carton. I watched as the time lapse showed me exactly how the little one transforms into the next stage of life. I swear I was starting to get emotional because watching animals morph, change, and grow is something that just makes me the happiest I could ever be. There are special glands in their heads that produce liquid silk and when it hits air, the worm spins it and it creates their cocoons. And it's crazy because once the silkworms finish spinning their cocoons, it's actually the moment where they're taken and boiled alive to harvest silk, usually in places like China, India, Thailand. And you have to boil them so you can end up with one long strand of silk that can then be used to make silk clothing. You technically can get silk without boiling them alive, but then you would have to let them hatch first. And then you wouldn't get one long strand of silk, you would get multiple strands and apparently it's harder to weave a shirt unless it's with one long strand and that's why they're boiled. And I really don't like that that's the case. I don't know how people boil them alive like that because the moths are so cute. That's also why I don't wear silk, but like the natural cycles of life, it is sort of inevitable. And that's why I was happy that we were letting them complete their life cycles naturally. And it took about two days, but then the cocoon was complete and it looked like this. Usually it takes 10 to 14 days for the little moth to emerge from the cocoon and then the adults, they actually only live for about five days. Their lifespan is so short and they don't even eat anything because they don't have functioning mouth parts to feed with. So I guess their natural instinct is to lay eggs and continue the life cycle of their offspring before they pass away. So I was really excited to soon have our little moths and I was doing so much research at this point to make sure I did everything right with the environment the cocoons were living in, like the temperature, humidity, light and after this little cocoon was ready the very next day I woke up and I noticed that a second silkworm was beginning to prepare its silk cocoon so I took it separated it from the others cleaned off all the poop and I didn't want it to get tangled you know I removed the silk strands from this one so it wouldn't struggle during the move like the last one did and that was a good idea because it really quickly spun a new one I had the time lapse rolling again of course and it was such an amazing phenomenon to witness this time, it took three days to complete the transition from 
from worm to cocoon. And I sat there thinking that this is exactly why I love witnessing different animals transition. Because the process is just so fascinating. Look at the gifts that nature gives us. Anywho, I was excited because in that moment I thought that in 5 to 15 days our little cute tiny baby moths would emerge. But I was wrong, honestly. Because that wasn't what happened. I knew anything could happen in a situation like this and it seemed like we were on the right track, so I was praying for success. We now had two silkworms that were in their cocoons and soon 15 days passed, but the moths are supposed to emerge between days 10 and 14. So by day 20, when we didn't have any moth emerge from either of the two cocoons, I was concerned and I felt that it was time to take action. And that was confirmed when I was examining the cocoons and got worried when I saw a darker spot. Sometimes the cocoons can get plagued with something called black death and that's just when they don't make it to the moth stage and they die in the cocoon. Sometimes the moth can even get stuck in the silk threads and have trouble emerging alone. I didn't want one of them to be alive in there and not able to get out and there I was as a worried mother because our two moths were supposed to emerge by now. So I decided it was time to perform surgery on the two little ones. But before I did the surgery, I noticed something insane. There was a third silk moth that really confused me. It was seemingly transforming, but it didn't spin any cocoon, and I wasn't sure if it was dead or not, so I put a time lapse on it and separated it from the others, and when I reviewed the footage, I saw it was moving, and it looked like it was trying to transform. So I kept the time lapse rolling, and something awesome happened. Although really rare, it is possible for silkworms to transform without spinning any cocoon, and I guess that's what was happening with this little one, because it started to go from white to brown and it was kind of wiggling around. So as I patiently waited for it to potentially transform into a cocoon, I started to perform the surgery on the first two cocoons. If everything went well, inside the silk barriers would be little brown cocoons and they should move and wiggle. So, since I hadn't seen any movement at all, I was really nervous to open them up. I started to realize just how difficult it was raising silkworms from the worms to the moths. I started gently cutting the first one open, and when I got it open enough to see a little brown cocoon, I got excited. I thought, okay, maybe it is alive? But then I noticed that there was this little thing stuck to the bottom of its little bum, and I thought maybe that was part of the caterpillar skin that didn't shed properly. It also looked looked a bit darker than it should and it wasn't wiggling at all. I tried to touch the bottom to see if we would get a little wiggle, but it sort of felt like it was liquefied inside and I thought maybe it just needs more time to transform? But deep down, I had a bad feeling about this first one and I soon got ready to open the second cocoon. And don't worry, opening cocoons doesn't harm the actual cocoon inside. The silk threads are just like an outer protective barrier so inside lives a little cocoon. You just have to be careful to open the silk casing properly so you don't harm the actual brown cocoon inside. I started to cut it open really gently and to my surprise, I revealed that the worm actually didn't even cocoon yet. And that was really strange because usually it happens within just a few days and it had at this point in time been weeks already. But I thought there was still a chance, so I put it back in its home and got the time lapse rolling. I was still a bit excited though because the fact that we even got to this stage was a huge accomplishment. It takes time and effort and it's a huge learning process here. I left them in the cocoons for another couple weeks hoping and praying that somehow, by the grace of nature, the first brown cocoon would start to move and wiggle and the second worm would actually transform into the brown cocoon. So it was a bit of a sad few weeks, but also happy. I felt blessed. So when the days passed and finally week 7 came around, I went back to check on them again. The first cocoon looked like it shrunk up and didn't survive the journey from cocoon to moth and I was really disappointed. And after reviewing the time lapse of the second cocoon, I realized something amazing did happen. You could see that over time the worm went from light to brown and that's the color it turns right before it goes into its cocoon. But to add to the disappointment I was already experiencing, it stayed like this, changing into a brown color for like four more weeks and then in a matter of just days it turned completely dark and it too did not survive the journey from worm to cocoon. And as upset as I was, we still had our third worm that I was relying on at this point to become a baby moth. It really is up to nature as to whether or not they'll emerge as baby moths, but I couldn't help but feel defeated and sad, yet trying to stay hopeful and thankful. 
and at this point in time I was really hoping that third silkworm that was transitioning without spinning a silk cocoon would give us a miracle. I had such faith in this little one because this was the last hope for us to get a successful silk moth to hatch and at first it was doing well, moving around and transforming from white to brown, but somehow it got stuck in this part of the transition and couldn't figure out how to morph into a cocoon. Everything was right though, the temperature, humidity, lighting, but it too turned completely black and it got all mushy. So nature just took its course on this little one and did not want it to hatch. And after such immense highs and lows in this journey, I honestly never expected to come to the realization that the journey of hatching silkworms actually is very difficult. But at the end of the day, I guess that is all part of the process. And if you know me, then you know I'm not giving up. It just takes a lot of patience and then leaving it up to nature to do its thing and hope the moths emerge. So I decided I am going to go back to the store to start this journey anew and try again. And listen, I promise one day soon we are gonna get a little tiny baby cute silk moth.